So what we've got here is an SLR and a tripod with an intervalometer attached. Rail these berms two or three times, just a wee session. And then we'll have our still. As a mountain biker, you're probably one of those people who really enjoys a mad inspirational photograph as someone on their bike. The quantity and quality of media available to us as riders to get us enthused and excited and stoked to ride is more than it's ever been before because of social media. And a lot of that, if you're kind of engaged with that, revolves around kind of biking selfie type images and we've all seen them bike pose against the tree. But that kind of photography is kind of limited to people taking pictures of themselves on their phones and their bike by a fence post at the start or end of a trail or in the car park. And as it's occasionally you'll get a really nice image of a great background or just a really sick looking bike, they all kind of look the same. So you're trying to up your bike selfie game. What do you do? Well, there's a few different routes to this. And I've, I've tried a few of them and they've all got pros and cons. The easiest way to get an action shot which is the real money shot that you want, is to get an action cam, get a mini tripod, get a clamp of some kind, and just video yourself going past. And got video clips sticked on Instagram. If you want the still, scrub through the footage, and because it's video, you've got your 25, 30 frames per second, so you're guaranteed to get the frame just right when you're lined up for that perfect image. Drawbacks. If you're pulling from video, you're not going to get the best resolution. Even if you are shooting in 4K, that image is only really good for web and screen content. Oh, the biggest drawback is going to be blurry, basically. And for an action camera, we don't have control over that. We're just hoping for the best. So a big, bright, sunny day might work a treat. If it's a little bit duller or if you're in tree cover or shade or it's overcast, it's a no-goer. You're going to end up with a blurred shot. So what can you do after that? Well, use the same action camera, stick it in time-lapse mode. With your camera stuck in time-lapse mode, you're limited to one shot every second or two shots a second, but they will be sharper, crisper images, higher resolution, which also gives us flexibility that we can crop down to the part of the picture that gives us the best composition. So that gives us a greater flexibility. But the holy grail beyond taking your mate with you to take the picture is to get a proper camera to take your image. We brought our SLR and set up a time-lapse situation using an intervalometer. Now an intervalometer, while sounding incredibly walls and grommet, is a serious bit of camera kit. We can set up a basic timing program to take an image every second, two seconds, three seconds, set a delay timer on it, and it'll run a series of images based on the exposure settings we tell the camera to do. This means we have control of the eye. So we have control of the depth of field, where the focus is, where we're framing it. So we can get our image looking exactly as we want, right through knowing the camera's going tick, 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 get our picture. If only if it was quite that simple. Now, exactly the same as when we're doing time-lapse of the action cameras. If you're doing any time-lapse photography to try and get an image of you riding past, fair amount of luck is involved. If you pass a point and you're past there in a fraction of a second and the camera's taking a picture once a second, there's a fairly good chance you might not be at the perfect point. And if you are, you're gonna be pulling a gurn. If you're trying to get a better bike selfie, you're trying to get an action shot by yourself and you don't have someone to pull the shutter for you, it's gonna take a while. You're gonna need a big fat memory card because you're gonna be burning an awful lot of that and bad shots, but you're going straight in the trash once you're finished. But if you get that good shot, for nice resolution, nice and sharp image, beautiful. So, let's take this to the field and try it out. So what we've got here is an SLR and a tripod with an intervalometer attached. So you need to make sure everything's set up. I'd make sure you're also in manual focus and you can pick that point where you hope you're going to be where the, the shutter takes. It's probably going to take at least two or three tries. I've set a little delay on here, three minutes to get myself up the hills, and then that way I'm not going to have any 
too many shots to kind of discard when we get to the end. And as well, just for contrast and comparison, we've got an action camera on a little tripod set up to do time lapse as well. This one's also going to be a lot lower quality, so let's fire this one off. Let's set this going. That's the timer counting down. So now I've just got to get my bike. Okay, a bit further up. Reel these berms two or three times, just a wee session. And then we'll have our still. So the first shoot location wasn't particularly great as the light's pretty dull today um, and it's one of those features where you know, it's fast berm, it shoots so quickly by the time you've gone up and down and up and down and up and down and you're still not getting it because it's taking loads of different attempts and the light's not good so let's look to a different feature. So we've got this steep rolling we're going to have a go at already done a few sighting runs and you see the SLR is already firing away at the bottom so uh, let's get to it well I think I'm probably going to call it quits today as I don't think it's been very successful to be honest I've had better results than previous attempts I think I brought the wrong lens for a start and the light's not great for a camera with such a limited range of eyes so but I did take the smaller older camera because if I crashed it wouldn't be such a big deal if the camera got hurt. It pays your money you take your choice. Anyway I'm gonna snatch the backpack and reel some turns and then head home. I say rail it's, it's more like a, a locomotive that can't go at, at such a high speed on the corner of lights might derail. That's kind of my railing of berms. Not particularly fast. But hey ho, it's snowing. Well, we didn't get the best result that time. It's not that the shots are bad, they're just not that inspiring. I still think this is probably one of the best ways to get action shots if you're working solo. And if the stars align and you keep at it, you do get that good shot every so often. Don't forget to let us know down in the comments what your little tips and tricks are to get shots of yourself on the trail. Give us a like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.